Welcome to the Barebow Project Podcast, developing fundamental skills for barebow archers and bringing the excitement of barebow competitive archery to you through the lens of some of the best archers and coaches in the world. everybody back to the barebow project um we are continuing the series where we go and reach out to our friends but really these are the people who have kind of led the way both in shooting um you know and and competing and trying to answer the questions of those who follow barebow i mean eric and as you know barebow has, has had a significant growth not just by numbers, but in my opinion, by skill and talent level. The the the, the pull across the 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 board. I think that those bottom or those uh, lower level scores, like the scores, are coming up. I think. Yeah, that's right. For sure. And yeah. You know, I, and and what we're trying to do is take some of those people like yourself, because I know that you've been shooting, like you've been shooting. If anybody who listens to this podcast hasn't seen some of the scores that you've been posting from practice, but you've been in that ballpark for a long time, you know, up and down, of course, but yeah. I mean, how many years have you been shooting barebow at this point? Uh, a little more than 30 years. Okay. So, so I think 30. I start, started in 1989. Okay. So barebow since 1989, how long have you been yeah. hitting the, those 280, 290 halves. How long have you been in that 560 range? Oh, uh, could it be since 97 or something like that? Yeah. And I'm sure that you have your waves. I'm sure you have your moments where things are, are you know, we always do. Everybody does, I think. But I mean, for guys like you, guys like Frederick, maybe um, like Owen John, you know, you're, I think, your higher end scores and then your lower end scores, that gap is much smaller than the vast majority of shooters. Um, and I'm sure that the idea is, and one of those questions, which is one we're talking about is, is hitting plateaus or like mental blocks. And I'll read the question because of, this is Bradley Thompson from point on archery. Um, <laughs> this is almost a year ago that this question was posted when hitting a plateau or a mental slump, what are strategies you guys use to work through them or break up your training and address the problem? And then a proceeding, uh, uh, the next question directly below that from Bradley is, when approaching a tournament, how do you train? What specifically do you focus on during training to prepare for the upcoming match? So, you know, what, mm. let's just start with the whole plateau mental slump type of deal. What, where where do you go when when you feel that coming on uh i have it i have it have it uh, for several years i have a very tough times when i've been shooting uh uh i shot very good in the early 2000 and 2005 then i had a really tough time shooting I wasn't in the national team for a couple of years. Otherwise, I've been in the national team for since 1995. So, um, but I come, made a strong comeback in two, 2014 for the world field in Croatia. And uh, I tra trained a lot and shot a lot of arrows and tried to make it more simple so didn't overthink every every problem. So just 
shoot and be happy and don't overthink it too much. So that's one way I have done. So I think it's helped me a lot. I, th I think the idea of, of not keeping things simple is oftentimes overlooked in multiple ways. And that including, uh, like, in my opinion, like shooting form, like people like to complicate things more than they need to. Yeah, that's um, right. And that's the entire, that goes through the entire shot process. And then as soon as we, as soon as we get outside of thinking in that simple way and just concentrating on the job at hand things get that's where we get panicky that's where we get yeah real flinchy and stuff like that um it in in your simplification like what is your did you simplify your form just your shot or your thought process like the way what was going on in your head or was it was it different like what what did you do to simplify it uh, I tried to make it more fun to shoot because it was too much uh, uh, thinking about uh, scores and and winning medals for a while, for a while for me. So uh, I tried to shoot a little recurve and a little bit little bit compound. Uh, I think compound and barebow is quite similar shooting techniques. For I think it's more uh, similar. Because uh, if you compare bearable with the recurve, it's more it's a different type. So, yeah, agreed. So yeah, compound it's it's helped me a little bit because you can shoot uh, pretty good, quite fast. You can be pretty good, come up in the in the scores of quite fast in the compound, and hold the arrows in the in the gold, and. Uh, you be more comfortable with uh, shooting uh, higher scores with the compound and then you can do it take it over to the variable after that so that's one way uh, then i also try to shoot in a blank bale without on about five meters it's very boring but it's helped uh, <laughs> <laughs> so but you, uh, you, you, uh, just for for clarification purposes, are you saying blank bail, eyes open, and shooting just for groups, or are you talking eyes closed, concentrating? Shooting um, with my eyes closed. Okay. Just yes. to, yeah, right. try to get a nice feeling. Um, so a lot, and I've I've said this a, I don't know, probably many times. I, I call that blind bail for obvious reasons because you shoot with your eyes yeah. closed and because we shoot what's called blank bail um, with eyes open at 20 yards or 18 meters concentrating on form. So I just use those two delay, I delay between the two that way, but yeah. Um, but blind bail is underutilized and there's, there's, there has been times I've heard people say, Oh, it's a waste of time. Don't do that. And you know, the fact is, is that the tension and direction of a good shot has to be repeated. And the more that we shoot that good shot, the more often we get it right, the easier it is for us to remember to do it that way when it counts. Yeah, like, that's right. To repeat it and repeat yeah. it correctly. We have to do it as often as possible correctly. Even if it doesn't involve the aiming portion, you could still mentally um picture the the aim happening mentally picture the shot happening but you're just go up when you have your eyes closed you just feel the shot so much more uh, but okay that's that's good that's real good is there anything else that you wanted to mention in regards to that topic the, the mental block topic <laughs> no just to keep keep reminding it it's going to be fun to shoot when you have too much uh, pressure, it's not it's fun anymore. So, yeah, I think sometimes people try too hard. Yeah, they try too hard to want to be like, what's the word? In order to be really, really good at barebow, you have to be, you have to be able, you have to be okay with not being great on every arrow because it's yeah. 
it's not like compound where you can really shoot 60 almost perfect arrows in a row. Yeah. In bare bow, it's the, the, the people who come out on top are the ones who are, are shooting <laughs> the higher amount of good arrows, not great arrows, good arrows. You know, you're only having a couple of crazy, if you can shoot a couple of eights, you're, you're doing really well, you know? Yeah. But yeah, keeping it fun. Yeah. That's, that's, that's great stuff. Um, it's, it's really something we do overlook though. We get too serious and I, I'm guilty of that. I get too serious about my score and, and every once in a while, um, this year at outdoor nationals is probably one of the first major tournaments where like I backed off on that and just was like, listen, and you know what? The conditions were really crappy. It was really, yeah, you, you, you was uh, very windy. I saw. Oh, it was yeah. awesome. Yeah. The wind was like <laughs> sideways. I mean, yeah. and it would change and then it would be in your face and then it was a crosswind and then it was pour <laughs> down rain. And, the, and it was like, it was just a completely unpredictable. And yeah. Um, when it's, it was almost nice to not be in perfect conditions and not ha not be as stressed out about aiming, be as stressed out about where the arrow was landing. Cause we were all just trying to make as good a shot as possible in the conditions. And it, it kind of worked in some ways to an advantage of like, you could shoot a little bit of a stronger shot, you can aim a little bit more, uh, a little bit harder, you know, and this is a 50 meter game. So I kind of shoot different shots with a 50 meter game than I do with a, an indoor game. But, you know, it's, it, and that it's one of those, you have to sometimes though, I guess, be able to go outside of that shot process, depending on the conditions and, you know, that's a little off topic and I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. That might be another podcast, but, um, well, let's, let's talk about that second, the second question that when approaching a tournament, how do you train? What specifically do you focus on in training to prepare for an upcoming match? So, um, and right now it's kind of weird cause it's like, there's not a whole lot of competing going on. No. Uh, I shot one competition in September. That's the last other was the last one before that was I think was the classic, so. <laughs> and now's so, a heck of a time. Now's a heck of a yeah. time for you to be shooting, you know, two ninety yeah. halves, and there's yeah. nothing. There's just, well, we have you have the World Archery Indoor Series, the the virtual. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot. Lot. I'm gonna shoot shoot mine tomorrow. So. Yeah. Did you shoot yours? Um, not to get off topic, but did you shoot yours at a tournament? Or did you just do it at your range and upload it through the app? Yeah, at, at my range. So okay. it's I'm gonna gonna try to have it live with uh, Lena tomorrow. You're gonna so. shoot it live? Yeah, me, be, be between us. So like on Facebook, you mean like Facebook be, Live? Yes, or Messenger oh. or something. Yeah. So because yeah. Uh, Lena and I don't live together. Yeah. So we we have about two hours drive between us so oh wow yeah so well i'm gonna try, try to do, do that, this cool. to, to that yeah are you gonna do it on your personal page is that what you're gonna do yeah no uh, no it's gonna be just between me me and lena i think oh you're just gonna shoot okay i see what you're saying yeah we're gonna have a competition in sweden uh it's gonna be called uh, super archers it's gonna be five men and five women uh, and one of them is going to be a junior and we're going to shoot 60 arrows and the lowest score is out of the competition. Then we're going to have uh, live feeds on the uh, Swedish uh, association's uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be matches there. And the winner of the variable is going to go to a super final. It's gonna, we're going to meet a one recurve and one compound. And we're gonna, it's going to be some kind of handicap system with the points so we're gonna start that in this i think it was in the middle of january i think cool that's really yeah. neat yeah it's gonna be no it's gonna be fun i like when they when you have opportunities where barebow and compound and recurve get to shoot together in some capacity yeah well, in representation of a team or whatever I, I think i like i love that that stuff um that's that's pretty neat though. I, I'll have to look for that and, and yeah. maybe even share the. Uh, I'll definitely share the link. Make sure you tag me in it or send it to me then. Yeah.
This podcast is brought to you by Arizona Archery Enterprises. You guys have heard of them, AAE. They've been in the game a long time, and they are now a welcome partner with the Barebow Project. As when we reached out to AAE, we wanted to partner with people who care about growing Barebow, and AAE is right on board with that. Check out their plungers, their rests. I cannot wait to get my hands on the free flight and their uh, their new plungers that are coming out telling you guys go to arizonaarchery.com and check out aae make sure you check back with us for discount code coming soon yeah so going up so yeah i imagine that's a big deal you're preparing for that what's like what's your approach what are you doing to prepare for that Uh, i try to prepare pretty good for every tournament i'm going to it's if it's it doesn't matter if it's a smaller small one or a big one yeah, I try to do it the same. Uh, I try to I sh- go for my um, feeling in the, when I'm shooting. Uh, sh- what do, I don't know the name in the English, but no, I, I I think I know what you mean. You mean like the yeah. feel of your shot, like being comfortable yeah. with your shot. Yeah, that's. I think it's gonna. That's that's the way how how I do it. So. Uh, I go most on the on the shooting, on the feeling with the shots. So, uh, if I have the, if I have a good feeling, I I prefer I perform good. So it's, uh, and also I try to have my uh, equi- uh, equipment in perfectly good shape. Yeah. Um, if you see the world field final from Cortina two years ago with my uh, serving has. T- with the knocking point, so I dropped two arrows in the beginning. That was not so good, <laughs> but I le- learned my lesson. So, yeah. So I tried to do have the. Do you shoot um, a certain volume of arrows? Like, do you try, or you just shoot to the point where you know that you're good? Yeah, I I I don't count my arrows. Okay. One 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 session one one day it can be twenty five thirty arrows. Next day maybe sixty arrows or. The most I shoot is about 150, maybe. 150 uh, for a session, like yeah. for a week. No, for a session. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I try to shoot about three to five times a week. Oh wow! So, yeah. Yeah, that's quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not shooting that much at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just haven't had the time. Yeah. Um, and it affects you. You can you can be you can be a consistent 540, 550, 560 shooter, and there are some people, and you're one of them because you've been doing it for so long. But like I know for me, because I've really only been shooting barebow now, this is only really my third year, like legitimately doing it. And mm-hmm. well, it's, uh, I'm going into my third indoor season. Um, this would be my third indoor season, not much of a season, but whatever. And for me, like. If I practice and I practice a lot and I get a lot of high volume, I get that feel and I know what you're what you're referring to. I'm good going into any tournament. It doesn't matter, but it it takes me longer as still a kind of new shooter ish. Um, it takes me like I have to deliberately practice. I can't just put it down for like after two or three weeks of maybe shooting once a week, like. I start to decline a little bit. It's it's just the where, and maybe because I haven't shot as much. When it when it comes to preparing for a tournament, like I I have to like ramp up the amount of of shooting I do, and then I try to scale it back a little bit as you get closer to a, to the tournament. But yeah, that's I mean you're shooting three, so you're saying three to five days. Anywhere yeah. from sixty to one hundred and fifty or hundred and hundred some arrows. I think he's at yeah. Um, you know, so that's that's a substantial amount of arrows. That's that's um, probably less than what a lot of people shoot. But you have the means to do it. Uh, is everything yeah. open over there as far as shooting right now? Are you able to shoot like? Yeah, one? yeah, we can practice. Yes, uh, in the larger cities like Stockholm, they are not allowed to shoot. They are closed the shooting ranges there. So um but here I live in a small town so it's it's okay here. 
so far. Yeah. And we have our it's we have our own range at the club, so that's good. So, we, so yeah, it's good. We are lucky. Yeah, very fortunate. Uh, we're yeah right now in Pennsylvania, in the state that we live in. Um, they've really cut back a lot of re- made a lot of restrictions. Um, added some restrictions back. I put in. I had to put in barriers in between each bale in my uh, in my archery range and. Um, just to try to keep our youth program going because that's really that that's kind of my focus with our like our brick and mortar our 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 range I just want to keep the kids shooting um but you know we wear masks and do all that stuff and it's just trying to host tournaments but you have all of these restrictions and these parameters that we have to like if somebody gets sick even if you test negative you still have to quarantine for 10 days and it's just it's all over the place but it, and it's tough yeah. so we'll get through it though we'll get through it for sure um anything else in that topic as far as preparation so um, yeah well, when i when i prepare for the bigger tournaments like the world fields or something like that uh, i shoot maybe five to almost every day for a couple of weeks before and the last week before i go down and shoot maybe just or one or two days so i'm know, a big I, fan of blind week. bail the day or two before our tournament just blind bail blind bail blind bail 30 arrows 45 arrows whatever it feels good and that's it just to let my body recover is that kind of the, the idea is that the body the feel is at its maximum and your body gets yeah. to recover a little bit then toward the end right before you, you compete yeah yeah, uh, I try to shoot good quality arrows, not mm-hmm. the, the quantity. So quality before that, so that's better. Then you don't have to shoot maybe 150, 250 arrows every time. So yeah, uh, so I, I try to have good, try to go, do good shooting every time. That's good. Um, I'm gonna look at. Let's see here. This was this was one. Did I don't know if you if you've prepared for this one or not, I did send it. Uh, Shane Johnson, a Geishwing, I think is how you say his last name. He said, uh, he asked about making small adjustments to point on at 18 meters. I guess the reference to that is, is do you, or, or what adjustments will you make during a tournament? I'm assuming that's what that is. Yeah. yeah because know. the second one is, is overcoming the need to shoot a lot of warm up barrels when most events only have two warm up ends. <laughs> I think we all yeah. we all could go for more warm up ends, but um, I have my opinions on that. But why don't you, well, let's talk about like adjustments? Like, what kind of adjustments will you make in a tournament? Um, if they are, if you are hit, hitting low or high, or is that the adjustment or the cr- the crawl? Yeah, I is guess. It? Well, he's. I mean, it, he's just saying small adjustments to point on. So, you know. Yeah. Will you will 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 you go through a checklist first to make sure that your form is right, or will you automatically make a crawl? Because think about it, if we're shooting 18 meters, up and down should not be much of a change from no. like at where we practice. It shouldn't no. be much of a change. It's typically what I have found is it's something that a shooter is doing. But you know what if. What do you what do you do if it's left and right? Explain what you would do. Um, but if it's up and down, I mean, what's where's your brain go if you have an up and down issue? It's probably not to change your crawl. You're probably looking at your tune, I would think. Yeah, sometimes if you if I shoot low for a, I don't know how many arrows, then I just make adjustment on the crawl. Yeah, just just a little bit. Uh, it can happen if you're shooting left or right in a if you're shooting indoors it uh, can be different lighting in, in the mm-hmm. in the holes that we are shooting in so uh, it's just uh, yeah, just uh, the plunger so you you don't give clicks to the plunger though you're not yeah you're not going to pull a demer and unscrew it and screw it in and screw it out no. he, he makes no. all kinds of crazy adjustments and it always seems to work he drives no, I don't the do wall. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't do that. Yeah, yes, yeah, small adjustments. Yeah, is enough. 
There is. I have found, and maybe I don't know if you agree, I think there's a point of diminishing returns with how many clicks you can give a plunger, though. Like, you can, like, for me, if I, if, if I get weird lefts or weird rights and I try to go too many clicks on the plunger, my groups will start to open up a little bit because you're getting outside yeah. of your tune. So yeah. If that starts to happen, people need to recognize that. If you get outside of your tune, um, it's probably a con either form or a combination of form and tune or like with lighting with the left and right. Because if you're, if you're just hitting left, and your groups could be good because your 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 tune is good and the lighting is making you hit one way or the other or you're not aligning the string the same way. And a lot of times, like if, if checking string alignment, if we have a lot of head movement but we don't check string alignment, um, you know, that you could still shoot a good group, but it could be left or right. If you're right-handed, I find typically I go left. Um, but if you're not checking those things, if that's not part of your process, checking your alignment or whatever, or your string blur, and you start cranking on your plunger, you could be going down a rabbit hole. Like you, like that's yeah. not, it's really, you, you have to know your form. You have to know your equipment and have, yes. and have to, you have to be able to recognize are you making good shots? Are those good shots? Are you keeping, you know, a, a 10 ring size minimum, you know, 10, nine ring size group at the target? If you're putting one up north and one south and one over here, and but they're all left, I wouldn't be making adjustments. You need to fix your form. Yeah. You know, um, how about the second part of that question, Eric? The overcoming the need to shoot um, the warm up barrows at when most events only have two warm up bends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here in Sweden, we have two warm up bends, but there are four minutes, two, two times four minutes. So we have a little more. Um, okay. So that's, that's pretty good. So, so, so they give you four minutes for three arrows, or you can shoot as many arrows as you want in those four minutes? As many, like as many you, you, you can. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. That's a, Hey, USA Archer, you need to take a <laughs> note on that one. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That's something good we have here. So we're allowed we're allowed to take we're allowed to take as many arrows as we want in, in mm. our sanctioned events, but it would be nice to have an extra minute in there, a minute and a half or whatever to yeah to throw a couple extra arrows downrange for sure. Um, do you do, I, do you get do you still get that little bit of I don't want to call it nerves, but like that first end of score, do you get that at all or not really anymore? That like nervous? No. Yeah, sometimes I get nervous in the first arrows. Uh, uh, I like that feeling, actually. So that's good. Uh, yeah, that's I think I learned. Back. I, I think I, I think I uh, learned to to like it. So yeah. Because in the beginning, when I was a new beginner, so then was ah, I feel sick almost. What the, yeah. You were so so nervous that you're shaking and no, but yeah, I like it now. So yeah, you have to embrace it. You have to yeah to be like okay, this is my moment, this is my opportunity. But again, it's that it's that mental that positive self talk. No matter what happens with the arrow you have to talk to yourself positively through it and and be focused on the process of making the shot not where the arrow hits and i've often i've often said you know like you can't if you shoot a bad shot and hit a 10 you can't be like oh, oh thank god you can't do that you can't you can't be okay with a good scored arrow on a real crappy shot you have to be like, okay, this is my bow arm was all over the place. I need to fix my bow arm on this next shot. But you have to remember all of the other details of the shot so that when you do come in and you settle, then that moment before you let the subconscious part of the release happen, that you, um, you finish the shot with good solid form. And, you know, I see a lot of times you see people take those big, like, oh, 
oh, thank God that hit the target or, oh, but a lot of times I don't think that they understand what they did wrong. And you, you have to, you have to know what you're doing in order to fix it. You know, yeah, that's a little off topic from the idea of the warm ups and whatnot. But I think what it, what it is, is, is the, or the, the principle of it is it goes back to what we talked about earlier is not worrying about the value of the arrow and the target, but rather measuring the value of how good of a shot we shot. Yeah. You know, um, any, any other advice, other things that you do while you're shooting to help deal with those, those nerves or that beginning, that the beginning of a tournament? Mm. Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, when I'm feeling nervous in a in a final or something, I try to to breathe in with in the, my nose and mm. out in a uh, take deep breaths and blow out with the mouth. It calms the the butterflies in the stomach. Yeah, they call that yeah. um, box. They call it box breathing, where it's yeah. like a like a four seconds in, four second hold, four second exhale, do it again. And then yeah. you go through this process and it's like a, um, I actually in USA archery in the, the national training system, they do, they do talk about breathing and about taking, um, very, uh, specific and planned breaths during your shot cycle as well, you know, between mm -hmm. take yeah. a good long, you know, 10 second break in between arrows. And I, I call that clock management, but as part of clock management, you know, it, breathing in between settling your, your heart rate, um, relaxing on, on full draw before you get into that next shot. Um, but yeah, so in finals, I mean, you, so you, you will take, you'll, you'll deliberately take like extra long breaths if you can, or however to, um, to calm your nerves because you yeah. still get you still get nervous in the in the finals and how about like Lancaster last year during qualifications qualifications you get a little bit jittery or not so much more so getting closer to the end no not so much a little bit in the beginning uh, the second second half was really good for me so I was in my what do you say groove back there mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so it was good okay. So, That's good. I don't think we yeah. have anything else there. Was there anything else we you wanted to talk about? No, not on that one. I think. No. I, um, I I will. There was one question there. I don't know how much. Did you ever shoot any Olympic recurve, Eric? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Clive yeah. Clive Barker and everybody knows Clive. That's in the barebow groups. He's he posts quite a bit, but he he mentioned. I'm gonna it's gonna address one thing. He said I. Uh, hit a plateau this was some time ago so this isn't relevant to now Clive I don't know how Clive is shooting but um yeah. he said is it time he said he hit a plateau and can't seem to practice through it is it time to get help can an Olympic recurve coach move me forward uh or should I seek a specialist and a barebow coach I don't know what the access is to what I guess you would call a barebow coach um like what do you think do you think that from what you know of Olympic recurve and your vast experience shooting barebow, do you, where do you think the carryover is with, with Olympic and barebow, like working with an Olympic coach who doesn't have barebow experience versus working with a barebow coach? I think it's a no brainer. You want to work with the barebow coach. Yeah. Because but, if I take an example here in Sweden, we don't have a uh, real good barebow coach. So, uh, we in the national team, we help each other for most of the times. Uh, so uh, I never had a real coach in my whole career, actually. Yeah. So I'm, I don't say I have learned it all by myself, but that's not true because I had help in the beginning in the club, in my club. So, but in the last 15, 20 years when I was shooting internationally for a national team, I, we had a... A team captain, who is a very good friend of mine, uh, he, helped, he helped me a lot. And he's also a barebow coach, a barebow archer. So, yeah. uh, so 
the ans my answer for that question is no, I don't think an Olympic co recovery coach can help. For, for uh, not, not a top barbell archer, but if, if you are a beginner in the barbell, maybe. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, have to, I, I think I have to agree with you on that. Um, I think it's, uh, it's a different shot. Yeah. After, I don't know if you are familiar with our coaching levels. I just finished my level four with USA Archery, um, my level four NTS coach. And okay. again, they cover Olympic and they cover compound. They don't cover barrel. Yeah. No. Um, that's my, my quest right now is sort of to, is to learn or to develop kind of like a baseline bare bow coaching um i don't want to call it a program but like applying the nts to to bare bow which is our national training system is kissick lee's system um after taking the course i will tell you that the national training system has you know there's the biomechanical side of 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 alignment and stuff like that right um and then there's also something that he calls the software of the shot. And the software is, is like, is, is the software of a computer. You can have a computer, but the computer doesn't do anything without the software. The software is up here. So that's what they teach. That 150% yeah. is a carryover to barebell. No question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the tension and direction of the shot, you know, the, the idea of, tension coming this way bow arm going that way and keeping that until the arrow hits the target stuff like that that's all carries over um the anchor not so much the no. follow-through the the sit motion that olympic recurve shooters do i don't think that is a, a is a um a carryover either um but you know there's there's some other things but the alignment, the idea of getting to alignment as, as efficiently as possible, definitely. Um, I think the expansion is different, you know, of the shot. Yeah. The expansion is, is a little bit slower and more methodical and calmer. It's not, there's not as much of an explosion when the shot breaks. It's got to be a little bit more calm and, yeah. you know, and, and that's why we, we don't brace for that explosion. We don't want that explosion. Instead, we learn to be calm in those moments. And that's one of the things that helps us um, handle the target panic. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's, it's, it's that you can learn to be calm through those moments. You can learn to do that. It's not you have it or Demer has it or Grayson has it or it's not, you can learn it, but you have to, you have to learn it from somebody know, who knows what it is. And the Olympic recurve shot is not the same. In my opinion, it's not the same. Even after taking the level four, there's a difference. Yeah. There's definitely a difference, but a lot of the principles, I would say 85 to 90% of the NTS, that, that whole thing is definitely applicable, but there's nuances to Verbo that I've learned watching and working with John and, and Grace and realizing you know, their form and alignment is the same every single time. And that's, that's really like the ticket is getting into that alignment because being in the alignment helps combat the target panic because your body's holding the weight of the bow as efficiently as it possibly can. So you're not as stressed, you're not under as much tension, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, I, that one wasn't necessarily a discussion we had planned on talking about, but I just wanted to address it because it was right there in front of me. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to throw out there? <laughs> no, I think you covered that one. So uh, sorry, I, <laughs> I I go on tangent sometimes, and that one I see that one come up all the time, and and it just yeah, uh, you know, I think I think more more coaches need to learn barebow. It would make them better yeah. and better coaches if they would just learn the basics of it. For sure. So yeah. Um, so how's Lena? Who's so who's 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 better right now? You or Lena? 
you guys go head to head sometimes, you know. Yeah. Uh, for the moment, I think I. You got an edge. On. On. Yeah, I think so. Um, we have a competition at the at our club every year, uh, and the last f- three years, I think, has gone has been gone to shoot off between me and Lena. So Lena won twice. <laughs> Lena won twice, and I won last year. <laughs> all right and well, Nina, if you watch this i'm in your corner i'm just yeah. saying no and uh every th- three times i shot a 10 but lena shot a better 10 wow. but last year i shot a 10 and lena shot a nine so <laughs> <laughs> you <shoot up. laughs> oh you're holding on to that one <laughs> yeah i'm gonna never gonna let her li- live that one down yeah Le- lena is is very good in the finals she's yeah. she's extra good in the finals she does have a, there's a case where like she has such a, de, a calm and like confident demeanor. Yeah. She, she, she just, she kind of, I don't know. I kind of get the impression like she lives for that moment. Like she's yeah, she, shooting. She, 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 lo- she loved that moment. I know. That's yeah. <laughs> like you can just tell like she enjoys being up there. And honestly, we all love watching, watching her um, shoot. Not that we don't like watching you shoot too, but <laughs> but it's it's definitely it's just fun watching good barebow happening any barebow yeah. really for that matter but um yeah that's that's awesome I, i'm i'm happy to hear she she seems like she's shooting well though i think i saw the other day she's she hit yeah. a, a personal record yeah 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 it was last weekend i think yeah when yeah we were shooting together last weekend on saturday saturday and sunday so yeah was so, a yeah was it 40 50 something or 40 something? Uh, yeah yeah for 548 yeah so awesome yeah, yeah that's, that's outstanding good. yeah was that in a tournament now no well i guess it wasn't mm. a tournament you don't have any no practice it was a uh, just a practice between us two so yeah that's outstanding though i mean yeah it's, I, I hear yeah. that a lot from people that are practicing right now and their scores are up and they're not yeah. going in it going into tournaments i mean yeah I don't typically go into a tournament and shoot the same scores um, that I shoot in practice. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I don't know about yeah. you. Like nerves get you a little bit, or 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 whatever, because you're always trying to be as good as possible. But yeah, um, that's true. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I can t- talk about one thing more. It's uh, about this uh, this year is different of course but uh, this was supposed to be the last te- uh, year for me and lena in the national team that's yes, we're gonna go to the to jankton and shoot the world fields yeah. and then then we're gonna say goodbye for some time in the national team but we're gonna continue shooting was the plan to go to lancaster and such yeah. good tournaments but uh, so lena shot the last time i think was in february or something then she didn't touch the bow until the early of september so it was a long hold up and i took about 10 weeks off from the bow and i think it's made me good because to not because over the 30 years i i i have almost practiced every time non-stop yeah. It was one one time I took uh, four weeks off when I went to Thailand for vacation. Uh, that's the longest semester or holiday I had took yeah. from the from archery. So so I think it was good for us to take a little break and because now I feel my shooting really good actually. So and I think it's really fun. Well, that's good. So, yeah, it, so in it, some it, ways, COVID helped. Yeah, I think so. Because I think some of, most of the archers have almost panicked because they, they, they can't compete. So, but I think we have shot so many tournaments over the years. So it's, it's okay for us, I think, to have a, <laughs> a, a, little, welcome, a welcomed break. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah it feels no, like that. No pressure. You can just, you know, you didn't have to shoot and... No. Yeah, I could see it's it's kind of like a break for your brain more so than just physically. Yeah. Physically, it helps too. 
in some regard, but I mean, you know, up here, this needs a break every once in a while as, yeah. as well. And if, when you shoot at that level for so long, I mean, and I don't, <clears throat> not to, um, not to continually talk about Demmer, but you know, he's, he has shot at that level for so long and, and it's, it's fun. It's fun to see um, him competing now. Cause I think he's shooting some of the best archery that he has yeah. um, now. And, and he just, he's got, I think the the layoff from COVID he kind of lit, lit a little fire underneath him as well. And then you start to see like, it's, there you, you you get that that itch to shoot that one you want to be there i can tell you it's it's definitely uh it's it's a, there's an addiction there so sometimes there's you know i don't know i just i don't even know what i'm saying forget it <laughs> just say that it's it's definitely the the breaks are welcome but you know with that once the seasons roll back around i think that um that anxiety of going to a tournament and being prepared for tournament and taking your stuff with you and traveling with kids like you guys yeah. do. you take your kids with it and it's i mean that does weigh on you a little bit as well so yeah so does that mean then that you're going to continue to shoot on the international level like with the team because you got to take the break is that what you're saying or yes yeah i think so it's gonna be oh like yeah. okay yeah and we have a new team captain also for the field team so it's a okay. friend of mine in, in my home club so it's oh, gonna be nice. it's nice. gonna be good yeah good I'm, I'm glad to hear that i mean so i'm sure yeah. some others aren't but <laughs> you know good hey it worked it worked yeah. out and um, so we have a european field in Croatia next year in September. So I hope we, hopefully we, we can we can go there. Uh, and after that, it's well, it's the World Games I think mm -hmm. in Birmingham in southeast of your in the states somewhere. I don't, uh, know. I don't even know. No, I don't know if I've looked in it. I'm not going the World Games, so. <laughs> uh, oh. Hopefully, me and Lena can go. I don't know. And then it's the world fields yeah in, in two years have you uh, so you've when you come to the united states you pretty much save your time for lancaster vegas did you ever go to vegas or no mm, no okay uh, i know and the field when they have that um i have yet to shoot a field round so i, I have to do that one of these days i just there's yeah, not where i live you, 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 yeah it's just not a lot there's not a lot of field going on where i live oh, okay that's all there's courses around but i have to travel quite a bit to get there okay yeah so and my schedule just doesn't allow it allow that to happen um <clears throat> i would like to though it i shot field as a kid and a little bit as a as a teenager with olympic never shot it with barebow so know, okay definitely have to would have to play around with that with that yeah team. yeah you have to try it because field shooting barebow on with on the field is yeah it's the best i think is you do think it's the best that's your favorite that's your favorite yeah. format yeah yeah it is i i like yeah 3d also but the field is it's the best so if you had to rank them you would say field tar target field and then what would you say is second 3d Ooh, yeah because it's outdoor in, in the forest okay, okay. <laughs> uh, right. yeah then i then i'll take for third i think uh, indoor i think yeah yeah see i'm i'm kind of i'm kind of backwards i really like indoor a lot yeah but i shoot more of that just because it's easier to, to okay. shoot. it's not easier it's not easier to compete don't don't it's not no. harder it's probably harder yeah but I like shooting it because I like the mental grind of, of the 18 meter game. I haven't shot enough of, well, I've never shot field, shot a little bit of 3d. That's okay. I just don't, I don't know. 30 arrows just doesn't do it for me here in America. I'd rather shoot more arrows, but, um, but yeah, I, you know, feel like I have to try it. You, I've heard so many people say that and I just haven't, haven't had the chance to really, 
to really give it a go. I'll have to try that for sure. Maybe this yeah. year the opportunity will come. But well, thanks so much, man. I know it was tough for us to to connect, but I'm glad we finally did. And <laughs> appreciate you finally getting on. I, I wish Lena was with you. I'll we'll we'll try to um we'll try to reconnect uh, again on another episode for sure. Um I'd like yeah. to get Lena on as, as well. Um and I mean, obviously you heard the classic is canceled. Yeah. Um, you know, and shout out to Rob and, and the the Lancaster crew, because I know they tried. Um, yeah. We had Rob on talking about it. They did everything in their capacity. Um, so unfortunately, Lancaster's canceled. Vegas is virtual. Um, our indoor nationals are currently still going, but, you know, you when you're shooting a national tournament and every venue is different and stuff like that. I mean, that definitely yeah. makes it a little less whatever, but Hey, archery is archery and we got to shoot whatever we can. So, and yeah, you know, I don't know over here. I don't know what it's like over there. I know you're not having many tournaments, but over here we got to support these clubs and everybody else and, and just try to get through this COVID thing until hopefully things get back to semi-normal. Maybe yeah. in 2021, probably 2022. I don't even know. Yeah, I'm afraid. I think next year is going to be almost the same as this year. But we hope, hopefully not. But well, we'll keep our yeah. fingers crossed. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's not the case. But you know, it's just everybody out there. Keep your head up. Keep shooting the online tournaments. Um, you know, World Archery is doing this this virtual tournament. Obviously, the Barebow Project, we have our own training tournament. Um, Archery Abroad has, has tournaments. There's a, there's a, there's a, that's a, and for those of you who, who don't know, Archery Abroad is a Facebook group run by Richard Harris. You can go in there and it's like 25 bucks to register. And then the pot, this pot is split amongst the Barebow, uh, amongst the shooters. Um, it would be nice to have more people competing in that because there's usually like five or six people max. So like to see more people in that but um yeah it's 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 pretty good but yeah and it you know eric if you guys have any online tournaments going on over there in your community or anything that that gets pushed out um you know shoot me a message or or something we'll we'll put it out there to help promote what's right. happening in your on your end of the yeah that's good to know. all right all right man well thank you so yeah. much i appreciate it yeah you're welcome um where can where can everybody find you uh you know do you guys have a i think you have an instagram page and stuff like that can you tell everybody yeah where to you? yeah we have a facebook page uh, me and lena had a facebook page uh, together also with archery and we are on facebook and instagram so okay perfect you can search search for us there all right thank you so much it was nice talking to you thank you everyone for joining us um and you know shoot straight or shoot often one or the other i guess <laughs> all right thanks again for watching